One of the things that really excited me about God was to begin to realize that he is sovereign and that he is auspicious, that he is in control and that he has absolute power. It was interesting to me to find out that he foreknew me, that he knew me before I was born, that my mother and father did not get their first look at me. They were not the first ones to see me that God had searched me before there was a where or when or this or that, that he had chosen me, that he had monitored my mother's pregnancy, that he had secured me, that he had protected me in the womb, that in fact, before he had formed me in the belly, as he said to Jeremiah, he says, I knew thee, I ordained thee, and I sanctified thee to be a prophet unto the nations. I did it before that you might be, all right? Before speaks to the past, to be speaks to the future. He said, you are going to be what I have prepared before, before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. There are no surprises with me. God says, I already know all about you. You will never surprise me. Your thoughts will not surprise me. I know your thoughts while they are still afar off. I know what you're going to do before you do it. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I ordained you. You couldn't have been a stillborn. I ordained you. You couldn't have been term a terminated pregnancy. I ordained you. You couldn't have been an aborted baby. I ordained you. You couldn't have died of crib death. I ordained you. I sanctified you. When did you sanctify me? Was it when I got baptized? Was it when I cleaned up my life? Was it when I got... No, no, no. I sanctified you before I formed thee. When your hands were still webbed in your mother's belly. When you were just a bleeping on the monitor. I sanctified you. Before they could determine your gender, I sanctified you. Before your mother began to throw up in the first trimester of her pregnancy, I sanctified thee. Before you were a gleam on a cold night in your father's eye, I sanctified thee. I sanctified you. It means I set you apart. It speaks more than cleanliness. It speaks to a line of demarcation. It means I marked you before you got here. I put my mark on you and you are mine. I sanctified you. I set you apart. In fact, it clearly means that I meant for you to be different. I didn't mean for you to fit in. What a ministry to understand. I never meant for you to be in the clique or in the club. I never meant for you to be accepted. I marked you. I sanctified you. I set you apart. You were meant to be an outcast with men so that you could be an in-cast with God. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I ordained thee. I sanctified thee to be. The good thing about God, when he ordains you, knows you, and sanctifies you to be, you don't have to worry about who else doesn't want you to be. Mm -hmm. Because no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Because you are sanctified. You are on a mission. You are sent from God. You are a stone in motion. You are an arrow shot. You are a gunshot already propelled from the heavenlies into the earth realm. You were sent from eternity into time. Your mother became the birth canal, the conduit from eternity into time. That in the fullness of time that God would bring you into this world for a designated purpose. You are a marked man. You are a marked woman. You are a marked child. You are a marked son. You are set apart. God has a definite agenda for your life. He is setting you up for a great move. He wants to move mightily in your life. There are some things that only you can do. You are distinctly different from anybody else. You are forbidden to imitate other people. You are forbidden to copy other people. You have been marked. When God wanted you, he created you. If he'd have wanted Sally, he'd have created Sally. If he'd have wanted Jimmy, he'd have called Jimmy. If he'd have wanted Ted, he'd have called Ted. When he called you, he called you because he wants you. You never have to be stressed out trying to be anybody other than yourself. He wants you. 
Your fingerprint is distinctly different from anybody else out of the billions of people on this earth. God never repeated on your fingertips with anybody else the same print. You are different from anybody else anywhere in the world. Past, present, or future. Nobody has ever even had your print. You are distinctly different from anyone. The hairs on your head are numbered not counted that would be awesome enough to know that they were counted that God could speak to you and tell you how many they were but that is not enough to say that they are counted they are numbered to be numbered means that if one of them gets caught in a comb he knows that that's hair number 15,438 ah! special to God. You are set apart. He has an agenda for you. The enemy is terrified of people that have been sanctified. He is terrified. He will set traps and obstacles and bondages to keep you from entering into your purpose because he is terrified of you. Don't waste time being terrified of him. He is terrified of you. The greater the struggles you face, the greater the challenges you go through, the greater the turmoil in your life is all the indication that Satan has assigned assassins to terminate you from reaching your designated target. He will do anything to overwhelm you, belittle you, to rip you of your confidence, your self-esteem. He doesn't mind how much you shout and how much you dance as long as you don't have any confidence, any faith or any integrity. He doesn't mind how excited you get as long as when you get through shouting you have no character. He wants to rip you until you become impotent and so impoverished in your spirit that you are an empty building, a ghost town, a vacant house. Your lights are on, nobody's at home. You're going through the motions of life with the form of godliness denying the power thereof. He doesn't mind how many days you live as long as you don't live in the days that you have. He wants to rob you and rape you and abuse you. In fact, the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants to sabotage your success because you were created to win. You were carved to win. You were set aside to win. You were formed to win. The part of meant for you to be a successful vessel of honor that you might be meet for the master's use. You were not meant to fail. You were not meant to die. You were not meant to quit. You were not meant to collapse. You were meant to live. Doctors still can't figure out why the human body dies because the body was meant to rebuild itself, refurbish itself, restrengthen itself. You were not meant to faint. You were not meant to collapse. You were not meant to have a nervous breakdown, a stress attack, a migraine headache, break out in nervous conditions and rashes and all types of diseases and hypertension and have stress attacks and heart attacks and nervous breakdowns. You were not meant to lose it, lose control, break out, kick the dog, slap the cat, kill the children, beat the wife, dog the children. You were not meant to be a failure. You were not meant to be destitute, to be lonely, to be hungry, to be isolated, to be driven. You were meant to be the head and not the tail, above only and not the knee. You were meant to prosper and live in goodly houses. You are children of the King, the heavenly host, the God of Israel dwells in the midst of you. Can somebody tell them you don't even know who I am? God is trying to teach you that wherever you go and whatever you do, the only thing that really matters is keep me in the middle. If you will keep me in the middle of your marriage, if you will keep me in the middle of your money, if you will keep me in the middle of your decisions, if you will keep me in the middle of your day, God says, I don't want five minutes when you start your day. I want to be your breath. I want to be your life. I want to be your strength. If you will keep me in the middle of your family, I'll bless you. If you will keep me in the middle, I'll show you what to do. It all revolves around his throne. It all revolves around his glory. He's not a part of my life. His presence is my life. 